Good afternoon. You're listening to WOOPFM 99.9, WOOPFM.com, News at Noon. This is Daniel Brantley. Two people were rushed to the hospital following a crash early Monday morning at 6079 Mouse Creek Road. Bradley County Sheriff's Department spokesman Bob Galt said a man and a young female were transported to Skyridge Medical Center after the pickup truck they were in slammed into a brick mailbox. There's no word yet on the victim's identities or conditions. The Church of God International, based in Cleveland, Tennessee, is filing a lawsuit against the makers of Salvation Boulevard, a Hollywood film. In the suit, the Church of God claims that Mandalay Pictures, Sony Pictures Worldwide Acquisitions, and Comcast Corporation knew full well what the Church of God's crossmark was, but violated federal and state copyright, trademark, and consumer protection laws in making the movie released last year. The movie's all-star cast includes Pierce Brosnan, Ed Harris, Marissa Tomei, Jennifer Connelly, and Greg Kinnear. Salvation Boulevard Congregation is the purely fictional Church of the Third Millennium, whose crossmark, the suit asserts, is a mirror image of the Church of Gods. You may be wondering why you don't know more about this film. That's because the website BoxOfficeMojo.com indicates while the production cost were $5.5 million, the film earned only $28,468 in six weeks of release on only four screens last summer. And Salvation Boulevard's run in theaters ended shortly after the Church of God filed suit. Church of God's communication director, Reverend Scott Carter, says the issue isn't so much how Salvation Boulevard portrays members of its congregation, but how others might if the Church of God doesn't challenge it now. And the Church of God is seeking three times the profit or losses that the defendants earned or incurred with the release of Salvation Boulevard. Chattanooga police are looking for answers after a victim showed up at the hospital with a gunshot wound. The victim showed up at Erlanger East Hospital around 3 a.m. Tuesday morning with a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Police have not located the crime scene yet. The former president of a Chattanooga technology company will likely be given a two-year sentence with little to no jail time after he pleaded guilty to two counts of statutory rape. Greg Austin, age 46, performed sex acts on April 23, 2010 with two girls, both whom were students at East Ridge Middle School at the time. In an investigation last year, a psychosexual evaluation showed that Austin does not show any tendency toward predatory sexual behavior. His actual behavior shows otherwise. The girls were given money in exchange for particular services, and the acts were brought to light after one of the girls' mothers found text messages from Austin to her daughter. The girls thought Austin was a law enforcement officer. There is a black market growing for chicken pox forming in Tennessee and across the nation by parents who fear that required vaccines will harm their children. These parents purpose, purposely expose their children to viruses such as chicken pox, the mumps, and measles, hoping they'll develop the immunity naturally, which they argue is more effective than vaccines. Chickenpox parties are advertised through word of mouth, invitation only Facebook groups, and message boards. In October last year, a woman in Nashville was caught by a television station selling chickenpox soaked lollipops for $50 a piece. Nine new warning labels that feature graphic images that convey the dangers of smoking will be required by the Food and Drug Administration to be on U.S. cigarette packs by 2012. Images include rotting teeth, diseased lungs, a corpse of a smoker, a man with a tracheotomy smoking, and a mother holding a baby with smoke swirling around them. The labels will also include phases, phrases like smoking can kill you and cigarettes cause cancer. The labels are a part of the most significant change to U.S. cigarette packs in 25 years. They're aimed at curbing tobacco use, which is responsible for about 443,000 deaths in the U.S. each year. 
the labels will take up the top half, both the front and back, of a pack of cigarettes and will include a national quit smoking hotline number. Warning labels must also appear in advertisements and constitute 20% of an ad. The FDA estimates the new labels will reduce the number of smokers by 213,000 in 2013 with smaller additional reductions by 2031. On hearing this news, local smoker Aaron Donnell had this to say. I know what the risk of smoking are. They don't need to write it down for me. I'm an, I'm an adult. I can stop smoking anytime I want. You are listening to Whoop FM News at Noon. This is Daniel Brantley. More after this. Good afternoon. You're listening to Whoop FM News at Noon. This is Daniel Brantley. <clears throat> a record number of black bears were killed in Tennessee last year. A total of 581 black bears were killed in 2011. The second highest total was 573 in 2009. Hunters are limited to killing one bear per season. Cleveland police say a man was apparently beaten with a baseball bat Monday night during a fight in a large crowd. Cleveland Police spokeswoman Evie West said the incident happened on North Crest Circle around 6.45 p.m. Two victims were assaulted during a fight in a crowd of about 30 people. One of the victims was hit with a beer bottle. Minnesota-based LifeTouch, which bought Olin Mills in November 2011, plans to shut down two Olin Mills production facilities in Chattanooga and cut 383 jobs. The company will still employ nearly 4,000 former Olin Mills workers countrywide in sales and on photographic teams. Workers in Chattanooga were informed Monday about the closings, which will occur over the next few months. The move is the second big hit the Chattanooga area has taken on the jobs front this month. Earlier, Grocer Food Line announced plans to shut down 13 stores employing about 500 people, including one of the food lines in Cleveland. Wrestling Hall of Fame takes eight folks in its induction dinner March 2nd in a story written by B.B. Branton, considered by many to be the greatest sports writer in Tennessee history. He explains that tickets to the dinner are $50 each. You can make checks payable to the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. In the class of 2012, Tennessee Chapter National Wrestling Hall of Fame, inductees are Ashley Brooks, Lynn Goss, Ward Gossett, Bill Doc Hodges, Roy and Marty Varner, Walt Tater Vineyard, and the Outstanding American Award will go to Lieutenant Colonel Frank Bryant. An uncovered letter written by John F. Kennedy to the head of the CIA shows that the president demanded to be shown highly confidential documents about F UFOs 10 days before his assassination. The secret memo is one of two letters written by JFK asking for information about the paranormal on November 12, 1963, which had been released by the CEA for the first time. The president's interest in UFOs shortly before his death is likely to fuel conspiracy theories about his assassination. Alien researchers say the latest documents released by Mr. Lester by the CIA add weight to the suggestion that the president could have been shot to stop him from discovering the truth about UFOs. Out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, a homeless man who was stuck in thick mud near the Rio Grande River in Albuquerque for three days was rescued Saturday after some high school students on a field trip heard him yelling for help. However, the man's newfound freedom wasn't going to last for long as he was wanted on a felony warrant and the police planned to arrest him after he was treated at a, at a local hospital, which they did. You're listening to 99.9 WhoopFM.com, W-O-O-P, News at Noon. This is Daniel Brantley. More after this. Perkins, Perkins, you're listening to WhoopFM 99.9 News at Noon. This is Daniel Brantley. A missing Alzheimer patient from East Ridge has been found safe at Chickamauga Park. Franklin Alvarado, age 66, 
walked away from his residence sometimes Monday afternoon. He was considered in danger as he is an Alzheimer patient and diabetic. Chattanooga County Commission Chairman Larry Henry said he is in no hurry to fill the judicial vacancy caused by the sudden death of General Sessions Court Judge Bob Moon last week. The decision will be up to the nine-member commission to make the appointment. Chairman Henry said the process will likely be similar to that when Judge Mike Carter resigned from his General Sessions Court post. <coughs> the commission took applications and then conducted interviews. Pam Melton, the administrator of General Sessions Court, said she was finding temporary replacements to stand in for Judge Moon until a permanent judge is named. Three men in a demolition company were convicted by a federal jury in Chattanooga of environmental crimes and obstruction of justice charges related to the illegal demolition of a Chattanooga factory containing large amounts of toxic air pollutant asbestos. David Wood, Donald Fillers, James Mathis, and Watkins Street Project, LLC, a business formed for the purpose of salvaging and demolishing the facility, were convicted of conspiracy, Clean Air Act, and obstruction-related offenses. Evidence proved the defendants entered into a year-long scheme in which the former standard Cusa Thatcher plant was illegally demolished while still containing large amounts of asbestos. Asbestos removed from the plant prior to demolition was also removed illegally, scattered in an open debris pile, and left exposed to the elements in the vicinity of the 1700 block of Watkins Street. Defendants tried to cover up their illegal activities by falsifying documents and lying to federal authorities. Sentencing is set for June 7. The victim of a shooting in Chattanooga, Kemma Evans, succumbed to his wounds on Sunday and died. Charges of the suspect charges on the suspect, Kaylin Bailey, will be upgraded from attempted first degree murder to homicide. The victim was shot multiple times while sitting in a car. Bailey was arrested in Atlanta. A burgeoning population of huge pythons appears to be wiping out large numbers of raccoons, opossums, bobcats, and other mammals in the Everglades, the study says. The study found that sightings of medium-sized mammals are down dramatically, as much as 99% in some cases, in areas where pythons and other large non-native constrictor stakes are known to be lurking. Scientists fear the pythons could disrupt the food chain and upset the Everglades' environmental balance in ways difficult to predict. Burmese pythons can grow to be up to 26 feet long and more than 200 pounds. They've been known to swallow animals as large as alligators. And in celebrity news, after seven years together and six kiddos, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie may be changing their tune on marriage. Pitt said, we'd actually like to get married, and it seems to mean more and more to our kids. Pitt, age 48, and Jolie, age 36, have said in the past that they would only tie the knot when same-sex marriages were legalized. But I don't think we'll be able to hold out. It means so much to my kids, and they ask a lot, Pitt told The Hollywood Reporter. It means something to me, too, to make that kind of commitment. Pitt was previously married to Jennifer Aniston for five years before they split, and he began dating Jolie soon after. You've been listening to WOOP, Whoop FM, WhoopFM.com, 99.9, .9, News at Noon. This is Daniel Brantley. Thank you for listening, and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to tune in to Fro Daddy today at 3, Whoop at Wills at 7, and tomorrow morning, Backfire with Steve Hickson starting at 7.30 a.m. Have a wonderful day.